All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're starting off with an introduction to structural dynamics. And in this lecture, I'd like to identify what dynamics is and how it differs from statics. And to do that, I'd like to start off with a demonstration. Imagine you have a good friend of yours uh, that is standing on a piece of carpet. This carpet is demonstrated here in the red. So that's our carpet. This carpet is pretty elastic, so it's going to deform a lot when we deform it, when we uh, pull on it. And um, let's uh, think about this carpet with our friend standing on it. And we start by pulling on this carpet fairly slowly. And the pull force is, has a magnitude of F. When we pull slowly, our friend starts getting dragged along as the carpet is deforming. So when the carpet deforms by a force, uh, by deformation U, um, this dude standing on the carpet moves along as well. So we end up getting force is equal to some stiffness parameter times U. Now, what if we were to pull really fast? This time, we're going to pull really fast. We're going to accelerate. It's going to be a pretty fast force. In such instance, this dude that's standing on this piece of carpet is probably going to be thrown backwards. And that really has to do with the concept of uh, dynamics and how it differs from statics. Now, we end up getting a force that is equal to KU. So the stiffness parameter will be there. But this time, we have other components in our um, force equation. And we're going to end up with uh, mass times acceleration which is really Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. What we are also going to get um, some other terms. Uh, this time, it has to do with the friction that exists in the carpet. Uh, we call this damping. So we have uh, C, which is the damping coefficient, and U dot, which is the velocity. Okay? And this really has to do with uh, dynamics again. So we're going to label this uh, statics. And we're going to call this dynamics. OK, so the next part in understanding dynamical equations is the concept of equation of motion. Equation of motion is really uh, this equation that we have uh, written down here. Now I'm going to write it down here. And the equation of motion is a second order differential equation. Um, it's second order because we have uh, motion, u, and its second derivative, uh, which is acceleration, plus cu dot plus ku is equal to some force that can be changing over time. So F doesn't have to be a uh, constant force. It could be sinusoidal. It could be, uh, it could have any, it could hold any uh, value. Uh, we call this the damped case. Damped. Simply because we have this damping parameter here in the middle. Now what we can also do is to ignore the damping parameter and write mu dot dot plus ku is equal to force. And we call this the undamped case because there is no damping parameter in there. OK, and so again, these are second order differential equations. ODE, standing for Ordinary Differential Equations. And um, to simplify things, we tend to draw our ODEs in the following way. We tend to um, label our masses as follows. So we can have masses that are like carts sitting on wheels and uh, they are attached to uh, spring forces or spring elements with values k. 
we have a dashpot element. Dashpot is um, responsible for uh, damping and uh, things like friction. And um, rule, what we're doing is we're pulling on this mass with a force T. And of course, we have the ground here. And the cards are getting rolled on the ground. Okay, so let's focus on the undamped case and identify some very important parameters. We said that the, in the undamped case, we have mass u double dot plus ku is equal to um, some force. Now, let's just say the force is non-existent, so we have a zero here. And what I'd like to identify is some very important parameters. Uh, the first one is called the undamped natural frequency. And it's referred to by as omega n is equal to the stiffness parameter divided by the mass parameter square root. And the units for the natural frequency is radians, which is a rotational um, unit, divided by time, seconds, radians per second. And uh, if we were to do the math, what we generally do is plug in a stiffness with units of newtons per meter. Our mass always has units of kilograms. And uh, the resultant uh, natural frequency will have units of radians per second. Now, the second thing I'd like to um, identify here is the concept of natural period. Natural period is the inverse of the natural frequency, and so uh, we can denote it by Tn is equal to 2 pi divided by omega n. So this is the undamped natural frequency, and this is the natural period. All right. And so the natural period tends to have the unit tends to have units of uh, seconds. Okay, so let's do an example now. To do an example, I need to draw a mass. Uh, this mass is hung from some sort of a very rigid ceiling, and there is a spring that it's attached with. Um, perhaps I should move the spring in the middle. There it is. There we go, that's our spring. It has units of K and this is our ceiling. It's fixed. There it is. And so uh, this spring has lengths of uh, L naught and uh, obviously gravitational pull is getting applied in the downwards direction, so that's G. And um, <clears throat> this mass has units of, is labeled M, and um, we are measuring U from the unstressed position. So U is measured from unstretched position. So what that means is that when we release um, the mass, it will lower itself to some stretched position, and then it will harmonically move around that position uh, just due to dynamical effects. And what we're getting asked is to find the equation of motion. Equation of motion. Um, this mass has units of 0 0.8 kilograms, is what the value is, and the stiffness is equal to 1.2 newtons per meter. So we should really understand what this concept means, um, the, under, the uh, unstressed position. 
to do that, I'd like to draw this mass. This is my mass. And it's hung by a pulley or some spring. And I'd like to sort of analyze what happens with its motion as this mass is dropped from some unstretched position. So this is the original position. We call this, um, let's call this U0. When we first drop this mass, when we first let go of the mass, and uh, by the way, the horizontal axis is time, and the vertical axis is U time, U over time. So when we first drop mass from its original position, what will happen is that the gravity will pull it down and uh, stretch the uh, spring to some stretched position. So this mass is going to go down, and there is going to be a new position, U1. It's kind of the new equilibrium position. And due to the dynamical effects, this mass will wobble back and forth until you know it dies off or if we have damping or if we don't have damping it will just keep going and that's what uh, the unstressed position means and that's typically a question that's asked um, of students in exams uh, they tell you to find the equation of motion with reference to the unstressed position or if you're told to do the equation of motion with reference to the uh, stretched position so keep an eye out for that one okay so uh, now, the question asked us to find the equation of motion, and I like to do that by first drawing a free body diagram. To do that, I'm going to put the mass down here and uh, label it M. Um, the gravitational pull is down with a magnitude G, so uh, the force of this mass going downwards is M times G. Now, when the mass is going downwards, this uh, spring is going to pull back upwards. So we're going to have F spring. At the same time, we have the inertial component, which we mentioned has to do with Newton's second law, is F inertial. Inertial force is always acting in the opposite direction to the direction of acceleration. So if the acceleration here is due to gravity, so we're going downwards, the inertial component is going to pull us back upwards. And we're going to have uh, Fi plus Fs is equal to mg. Okay, and so inertial component is equal to mu double dot plus the spring component ku equals to mg. <clears throat> and when I plug in my constants in, I have 0.8 u double dot plus 1.2 u is equal to um, 0 0.8 uh, g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, 9.81, and that equals to 7.48, or excuse me, 7.8. Four, eight. Okay, now we have obtained our equation of motion. This is an undamped equation of motion, uh, which means that there is no damping parameter. Uh, what if I were to ask you, what is my natural frequency? What is my undamped natural frequency? We mentioned that the natural frequency equation is omega n is equal to k over m. So I can literally plug in my parameters. I have 1.2 newtons per meter. I have 0 0.8 kilograms, and I need to take the square root of this. And I should end up with a natural frequency that's equal to radians per second. Okay, so you may be looking at this and you may be thinking, okay, what does radians mean? Doesn't make much sense to me. What if you know, we could answer or we could express this in terms of hertz, which is uh, just one over a second. <clears throat> yeah, we could do that. That's pretty straightforward. 
what we can say is 1.22 radians per second. One cycle of rotation is equal to 2 pi radians. So if we were to just multiply and convert, we would get a value that is equal to 0 0.194 hertz. And we call that uh, natural frequency, but this time it's expressed in hertz. We can also calculate a natural period. Um, natural period is equal to 2 pi divided by omega n, or just 1 divided by fn. And um, when we do the math, and hopefully we've done it correctly, we should get 1.15 seconds. So if I were to go back up and look at this diagram that we had, these uh, harmonic cycles that we're going to see from our mass are going to be cut into five second elements. So from one point to the next identical point in this harmonic cycle is going to be 5.15 seconds. Okay, and that's really what that means. All right, I hope uh, you found this introduction to uh, structural dynamics uh, useful. Uh, in the next lectures, we're going to start looking at single degree of freedom systems and really solving for this differential equation. Uh, in dynamics, we're dealing with a lot of differential equations, uh, whereas in statics, we just dealt with al algebraic equations, so there were no derivatives involved. Um, but the difficulty should not be uh, any more. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, see you in the next uh, lecture and uh, feel free to leave any comments, questions, feedbacks in the comment section. I will definitely look at them. All right, appreciate it.